chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine these two are the most popular drugs these days because of bad reasons and even though this chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine are known to health professionals only but every individual in this world know about these drugs now but there are so many misconceptions regarding the same and there are also differences in the use prescription and also the action on the covid-19 also debatable even though the fda did not approve this drug as of today but fda has given an approval for off label use what is the difference between these two when we say that this drug is approved by the fda it is safe for the human use anyway it is proved that it is safe for the human use when we are treating for malaria so there is no problem in that and also whenever we are giving the drug what is the effectivity of the drug on a particular clinical scenario is also very important so there is no precise mechanism of action or approved mechanism of action which has been approved by the fda we don't have as of now but still it shows the effectiveness on preventing the covid-19 as well as the treating the covid-19 patients there's a reason okay the fda has given the clearance that you can use it as offline use but the physician should recommend fda never told the public that you can go to the counter and buy whatever how much you want and take the dosages whatever you want it did not say that what fda says is whenever you are at a very higher risk of covid-19 you have a symptoms of covid-19 if you are hospitalized to patients and if you are a vulnerable candidate then only you should take these drugs but should be recommended by a licensed physician as a general public just cannot go to the counter and consume it whatever they want and whatever maybe the dosages they want because there are life threatening side effects which are associated with these drugs and there are also indications contraindications there are so many bunch of things clinician knows about these drugs so it is not at all recommended for any patient to use it just like that so now let us enter into the topic what exactly these drugs are so these are the drugs which are derived from the quinoline molecule and both of the drugs used as anti malarial blood skin zonticides and hydroxychloroquine is also frequently used as an anti rheumatic even though the use is pretty limited now but it can be used for anti rheumatic their mechanism of action is not entirely understood but however despite their varying therapeutic dosage and toxicity both of the drugs have a similar clinical indications and side effects and one of the most serious side effects is the retinal toxicity that is the reason i told you that you have to consult physician before consuming such drugs and this retinal toxicity because of these drugs referred to as 4aq retinopathy or chloroquine retinopathy which must be screened for all the cases of long term use the anti malarial drug chloroquine and its safer derivative called as hydroxychloroquine have been used since the 1940s it's not a new drug mainly to treat autoimmune disorders though the drug is rarely used for the rheumatoid arthritis around 2/3 of the patients with aciline in europe use hydroxychloroquine to manage their symptoms and it is the only known therapy so far for the primary jockren syndrome and the findings have promoted many including the us president donald trump to tout hydroxychloroquine as a game changer to fight against covid-19 so after the statement the drug has become very popular all over the world as i already mentioned in the beginning the us food and drug administration called as fda has designated hydroxychloroquine for off label use 
mainly the compassionate use for treating COVID-19. And WHO says the drug to its large global solidarity trial to test a variety of potential treatments. But the virologists and infectious disease experts caution the excitement of the premature because we do not know much about this drug, how and what it acts on COVID-19. Now let us discuss about the effects of the drug. So we have the widely accepted mechanism of action, which I'm going to discuss right now. That is the anti-malarial action. So the drug first enters into the blood. From there, it accumulates in the parasite food vacuole. And what happens is within the vacuoles, the drugs are protonated and trapped. And once they do so, what happens is it inhibits the polymerization of heme into hemozoin and form the heme chloroquine complex, which is highly toxic to the schizont by those it lice membranes and finally kill the parasite. This is the completely known mechanism of action and widely accepted mechanism of action to treat malaria. Now let us talk about the anti-rheumatoid action. And these are the drugs interfere with the antigen processing in macrophages and other antigen presenting cells. By doing so, they decrease the formation of a peptide MHC protein complexes. And by this, they down-regulate the immune response against autoantigenic peptides. This is how it can prevent the autoimmunity and used to treat autoimmune disorders. And what would be the side effects? And everyone are concentrating on these side effects these days. First important thing will be the visual disturbances. Especially when you are giving the hydroxychloroquine for long term use or higher doses for a pretty longer period of time, regular ophthalmological exams are recommended. Mainly because there is a chance of development of irreversible retinopathy, which is the key fundoscopic feature, which is bull's eye maculopathy. And also there will be an reversible corneal opacity can develop, blurred vision and photophobia. These are the side effects what we can see on the ophthalmological perspective. And what are the gastrointestinal side effects? As we know that majority of the drugs are responsible for the development of nausea, vomiting and all. Even this has the same kind of a side effect called a nausea, but with cramps, which is the most common gastrointestinal side effect what we will see with these drugs. And what are the neurologic side effects? So neurologic side effects should be taken pretty seriously because there may be a chance of development of uh, sensory neural deafness, tinnitus, cranial nerve palsies and masthenia like muscle weakness. These are the neurological manifestations. And what about the dermatologic side effects? The dermatologic side effects are rare, but if developed photosensitivity, pruritus, alopecia and bleaching of hair. So the dermatological side effects are more commonly seen whenever we consume these drugs for higher amounts for longer periods of time. So what about the indications of these drugs? So these are the drugs useful for the treatment and prophylaxis of malaria due to Plasmodium malariae, Plasmodium ovale or susceptible strains of Plasmodium falciparum but not the Plasmodium vivax. And they are used in the mild courses of rheumatic diseases like rheumatoid arthritis mainly as a basic therapy and also used for systemic and discoid lupus erythematosus without organ involvement and also can be used for porphyria cutanea tarda especially in low doses these are the indications all these are fine but the interesting fact for the general public these days what is the effect of these drugs on COVID-19? As I already mentioned in the beginning, as these are the inhibitors of the heme polymerase, they are also believed to have additional antiviral activity, especially by 
alkalinization of the phagolysosome which inhibits the pH dependent steps of the viral replication. This may also affect the glycosylation of angiotensin converting enzyme 2. The receptor especially for the SARS coronavirus 2 uses to enter the cell. There is a pretty much interesting report from the Wong et al reported that the chloroquine effectively inhibits SARS coronavirus 2 in vitro and the pharmacological activity of the chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine was tested using SARS coronavirus 2 infected viral cells. Physiologically basic pharmacokinetic models were conducted for each drug and the hydroxychloroquine was found to be more potent than chloroquine in the vitro studies. And based on these models, the authors recommended a loading dose of hydroxychloroquine 400 milligrams two times a day followed by 200 milligrams two times a day for four days. This is what has been recommended. But again and again I am saying just because I mentioned about the dosages as well as the effect in the video, it doesn't mean that you go to the counter and buy them and take it. You cannot because as I already mentioned, life threatening complications may arise if you are not the person to take. What are they? QT prolongation, which means especially we can call it as the diseases of the heart for the general public. Because the physicians knows as well as the medical student knows what is QT prolongation. So QT prolongation may develop, arrhythmias may develop, especially when you use hydroxychloroquine in combination with azithromycin. So the chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin each carry a warning of QT prolongation and also can be associated with an increased risk of cardiac death when used in a broader population. Because of this risk, the American College of Cardiology has published a thorough discussion of the arrhythmogenicity of the hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin that includes a suggested protocol for the clinical research QT assessment and monitoring whenever we are using these two drugs which are co-administered in our body. So that is the reason because of the presence of life-threatening complications in terms of arrhythmias, QT prolongation, as well as cardiac arrest, sometimes may happen. That is the reason, even though you know this drug, which is very popular, always consult your physician before consuming those drugs. Stay safe. Thank you.